and that, my friends, was how I outsmarted the sorcerer. In the end, he was blinded by his craving for power. So impressive, Danny. You are a great and powerful wizard. So tell me, how did you defeat the man with straw for ends? You mean straw fingers? Well, about that, I've done some scrying and I don't think your happiness problems here are your fault. Somehow, straw fingers returned. Wait a minute, hang on a sec, you said that Strawfingers was dead. I mean, literally you said dead is dead, right? Strawfingers is no mortal man. He's more like a force. His soul was scattered into the fabric of the universe itself. He was a wizard once. I studied under him and even admired him. But now, now he's something else. And what that is cannot truly be killed. You can destroy his body, but eventually he will return. I can feel his essence beginning to congeal in the air, like a smog invisible to the eye. And I think the citizens here feel it too. Oh, like Sauron from the Lord of the Rings. How do you know about Lord of the Rings? I watch it on your 4K flat screen TV. I hope you don't mind. My favorite part was when the eagles saved the day, they are the best characters. But I don't know why they don't just fly the ring into the lava. Yeah, you and me both, pal. So what can we do about Strawfingers? Nothing for now. The best thing you can do is focus on building the city, grow the colony, because we might need strong defenses for what's to come. Oh, and keep your eyes peeled for anything out of the ordinary. All right, I guess I can... Oh, hello, my dudes. Welcome back to Minecraft Mine Colonies Byzantine. You've caught me, Dunny, and Aquilario enjoying a nice drink at the tavern. Now, of course, Aquilario is on smoothies because he's not old enough to drink, but Dunny's enjoying a fine glass of wine, it seems. And I've got myself a beer. Delicious. Anyway, after last episode, I did a very small amount of decoration next to the farm. So let's take a look. So yeah, while we had planned to put a road here and fields, I wasn't quite sure how big the fields we were going to use were going to be. So I basically just flattened the land and prepared it for this episode where we're going to be looking at sorting out those big three resource gathering buildings. So let's get going. I'm going to say goodbye to these guys. It was great having a drink with you two, but until next time, yep, see you later. So yeah, every episode starts with a bit of research, and I do believe that the rails research has been completed. I'm not sure if the other one has as well, because research doesn't always complete at the same time. It's super tied to the researchers themselves, so if one of them gets sick, that research will slow down. It's pretty cool. But yeah, rails being complete is super exciting. It means we can start to speed up our colony with some rails. I'm going to need a lot more iron though, because rails are not cheap. So a quick look shows us that there's no research in progress. That means both of them have been taken care of. Now, we got the big three done last episode, and that's really important because it unlocks getting through these extra huts, but we do need these buildings to be level three. So that's what we're gonna try and manage this episode, as well as configuring them. But yeah, the sawmill is super essential for getting our mine actually working on the reg. Also, the stonemason's hut is very important too, and all of these kind of pave the way to other exciting buildings as well like the Crusher's Hut, the Sifter's here somewhere. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of research locked behind getting these buildings to level three. But since we can't do that, let's smash some more of these civilian ones. And certainly first aid looks like a very important one, but also higher learning. We wanna get both a school and a library in position. We've done Keen that unlocks the library, so the next step is gonna be higher learning. So we'll do first aid and higher learning. Three books and eight hay bales, shouldn't be a problem. So here we go, got the books, got the hay bales, let's get this research underway. Very simple, but very effective. Also, these are only level one researchers, so they should be very, very quick indeed. There's one, and the other, down here somewhere, I think. There we go, higher learning and first aid underway. And as you can see, level one takes 0 0.5 hours, level two takes one hour, level three is two hours, four hours for four, and then eight hours for five, 16 hours, for level five research, but that's super end game. Nothing to worry about right now. Okay, cool, so the research is in position. Let's go and start thinking about how we're gonna do these farms. So by the way, a massive thank you for your comments last episode. I love reading those, so keep them coming in. There are all kinds of great crop ideas for the fields. Now, speaking of fields, what kind of fields does the Byzantine pack offer? Now it's usually, is it gonna be under agriculture, horticulture, 
plantation, composter's hut, flower shop, and farm. Nothing here. Let me dig through these and see if I can find a set of fields. Aha, I found them. Infrastructure, fields, and, oh wait, what? Plantation? There's only plantation fields? Field structures. Here we go. No, a lookout. That's not a place to farm. It's a place to look out. Okay, well that's one of the shortcomings of the Byzantine pack. It looks like it doesn't have its own unique fields. That's a bit crazy. Well, okay, maybe we can dip into another pack for a pretty cool looking field. So I'm gonna take a look at some of the other packs. Because while we are primarily Byzantine, you don't have to be 100%. And while I do want to be 100%, I kind of can't right now. So let's see if we can find some nice looking fields. Okay, so here we go. Colonial style has this nice little kind of cascade field thing going on. Um, yeah, this looks pretty cool. And you know what? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we're going to add that one there. Tick the box and we'll get, ooh, I reckon Nikki on this. We'll remember this because we're going to alternate the buildings. We're going to have three farms built by Nikki and Jay. And then the farm itself is going to get upgraded up to two and then up to three. So we're going to use the large field template. But what we could do is switch out these stone brick walls for the more Byzantinian diorite walls. And we'll pull the trigger on that one. This time it's going to be Jay. So we've got Nikki and then Jay, and that brings us to three fields. We've got the base one that comes with the building right there, and then two fields right here. That should be great to get us going with. We will, of course, bring another one over here, and then maybe a fifth one right here in front of the building. Looking pretty good. So Nikki's there, Jay's here. Then we'll put Nikki on the farm to get this up to level two. And so build options back to Nikki and upgrade this mother trucker to level two. The materials aren't super crazy, just cream and beige bricks. I love to see that. And now that's gonna mean that Jay is short of a job. So while Nikki is bringing this up to level two, Jay is gonna pop over to the carpenter. No wait, not the carpenter. What's this guy called? What are you called, derpiest bits? I'm a forester, sir. Wait, did you, did you just talk? Am I hearing things? Well, okay, you're a forester, good to know. And that looks like we have a plan going forwards. Foresters, fields, and the farm up to level two, hopefully up to level three. Well, all right then, research is locked in, the builders are good to go. I'm gonna go and grab their materials, and then I'll see you for a bit of a time-lapse build. So very, very, very simple. Our main goal this episode is to get the farm up to level three, the forester up to level three, and the mine up to level three. That's gonna unlock a whole bunch of essential research. But beyond that, it's also gonna be very important to get some crops into these fields. You guys suggested some great ones, but you are correct. The most essential crops for us to grow are just the base ones that we're gonna need for medicine and food. So it's gonna be carrots and potatoes and wheat. Those are essentially the core three. Uh oh, my dudes, we're gonna have to pause it right there because I hear a raid coming on. Oh man, it had to happen, didn't it? Mid time lapse, we've got a raid. Let's get to it then. Northwest, so that's north, which is that way, and then never eat that way. So we're looking for somewhere over by the hospital, should be where this attack is coming from. Actually, let's sleep through the night first because, yeah, tackling raiders at night, like I've said, is an ordeal. Okay, a fresh day, let's get to it. So, the map is not much of a help for us. Can't see any rude dudes yet. Northwest, they could be anywhere over that mountain. Let's take these stairways up, because getting on top of that mountain will give us a vantage point where we can look out and see where the attack is coming from. Okay, so far so good, I don't see any rude dudes. They could spawn anywhere though, even inside caves, I believe. Oh wow, okay, so, so one raider down? What happened there? Four raiders left? What's going on? I mean, is, are our guys defending the colony? Let's get over there. Oh man, I feel like, well, if our soldiers are doing the work, that's great news, but oh man. Can't believe I let them slip by. Oh my god, random nerd isn't even doing anything. Oh right, yeah, because we haven't fixed her, the road to her guard tower yet. We need to get on that. Dunsophrenius, as helpful as ever in the tavern. Oh, Jen Mahogany, what a name. Oh my god, no, they're, they're at the insulate. No time to lose. How'd they get here so quick? Who's fending them off? What's going on? Oh, they're attacking the tower. Oh, wow. These guys are tough. Two, one. And it looks like the last guy's over there. 
why are they attacking the tower? And why is Craven Hoobies crapping himself inside this tower while they fill it with arrows? Oh man, what a hero. The bait that we needed. Come here, you. Amazing! We fended off the first raid. Well, the second raid, I think it must have been. Whew. And with that in mind, it's going to be a few more nights at least before we get another raid. So I reckon we're safe to get back to the time lapse. Don't worry, little Jessim foam tankard. The raiders have been defeated. You're okay. Heavy breathing there. I think she's having a panic attack. Anyway, yeah, there's building to be done. And it looks like these guys are even just building through the raid. You know, screw the raid. Now, the one thing that always sucks about fields in all of these style packs is they never really look that impressive. I suppose they're not really supposed to. It's just a place for you to grow crops. So a simple wall is all that's required. But I think I would like to come back and jazz these up and certainly replace the cobblestone and stone bricks with those diorite walls. It's going to elevate the colony massively. Now, one quirk of the forester is that they often, when they're trying to dig for trees, treat any old log they see as trees. So if you're not careful, you can have a forester that digs up the logs that are parts of your other buildings. And that's why with the forester, what I think I'm going to do is not give him an area to dig. Instead, we're going to put some botany pots into the forester's huts and attach those to a stash block. So couriers will still come over and grab up logs. But it's a neater way with less risk of the forester bugging out and digging up a building. They usually work quite well, but I don't want to take any chances. Now Jay is taking an insane amount of time to get this forester's hut built. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in game and let him do the final touches in the background. Because I really want to get this farm configured. So here we go, we have the farm, field number one, field number two, and field number three. So let's get this thing configured, and oh man. Oh, it looks like the builder has made a bit of a mess here. They've used a waterlogged cobblestone brick that's meant there's water spilling out all over the shop. That's something we don't want, so we'll have to fix that because it's going to slow down our workers as well. There we go, that's fixed that. And now there's a way to get to the farm as well. But the same problem's happening over this side also. Oh yeah, what an ugly mess. I see what they've done. So the field relies on these blocks to be waterlogged so that the actual field is irrigated. And without them, we're in trouble. So I guess we're going to have to irrigate this ourselves by digging out a couple of blocks here. And there we go. Waterlogged blocks are actually a clever way of doing this. So, you know what, hats off to the uh, style maker, but for us it kind of didn't work because those waterlogged blocks were creating a bit of a flood. Okay, right, so we've got three fields. Let's now go and grab some tools for Canaan. Actually, no, we don't need to go anywhere. We can just use some, wait, what's this stuff? Rubber planks, can these make sticks? Yeah, okay. So we don't need to go anywhere. We can just make him some stone tools for now. He can use iron, but you know what, we don't have the iron, so we'll give him the stone for now. So now he has the hose. Place more fields to get me working. Right, so let's go up to the block and show you how you configure the fields. So basically it shows you the fields that are nearby in the hut. We've got three here, southwest, northwest, and again, southwest. Okay, but the farm block doesn't recognize these as fields until you actually tell them what crop to grow. So I'm gonna head over to the boat, grab myself a carrot, potato, and wheat seed, and then come back here and get these configured. Okay, so I've got the carrots, the potatoes, and I do believe a lot of wheat seeds ready to rock. So field number one. Now, this is the big field, uh, and I like how it cascades, and I think what's going to look really good here is going to be wheat. So if we go to pick seed, and... Oh, look, you get a nice, like, interface. So do we want wheat? There we go. Wheat seeds, select that. Now, can you select more different types of seeds? No, it locks into one seed per field. Good to know. So boom, wheat fields here. And it's a five by five field. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, looks correct. Oh wow, and Canaan's already zipped over here, ready to rock. So like I said, the second you select a crop for the field, it becomes recognized as a proper field. La, 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 la. Having a good time there, whoever that was? Oh, Jay, good job. About time. 
So we're going to make a path here as well, just because it'll look nicer. Oh man, it's amazing how these paths just elevate things. And bring it over here, nice. Come around the farm. And bring it along here as well. Things are a bit tight here, we didn't leave much room between the buildings, but we'll thank ourselves later because this has created for us a lot of room. So field number two, and this is going to be carrots. Boom, select carrots, boom. And this is very important because carrots are essential as a cure for influenza. And now last but not least, this field right here. So let's zip through the farm. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this one's missing a scarecrow block. So I think, I think I've got like a spare one. I made a few of these. So if we put this down right here, and again, these fields are quite simple to make. You just need leather, can't be the parchment, it's got to be the real deal leather, and then either a pumpkin or a hay bale with some sticks. So we'll plonk you down here, my friend, right click, pick a seed, and this one's potatoes. Now a quick scan of this shows us that we can put all kinds of crops here. Tea, oats, we could even grow zinc if we had mystical agriculture. Basically every single seed in the game can be grown here. Man, even, did I see unobtainium seeds? Wow. So do keep those suggestions about things we should be growing on the farms coming in. But anyway, potato's good for us. Now we need to make sure that Kanan knows how to make seeds and has the materials available. So we're gonna go over to the block again and configure some recipes. Here we go, crafting recipes. So Kanan knows how to make a carved pumpkin from a pumpkin, good to know. And he also knows how to make mud from water bottles and dirt. But we're going to teach him another recipe. We're going to teach him how to make, ooh. Carrots into carrot seeds? No. So carrots just grow on their own, same as potatoes. So that's about it. We don't need to teach him any recipes. What we do need to do though is give him the materials he needs to get going with these farms. Once all the land is actually hoed, his tool usage will go down massively. So come here, Kanan. So we'll give him the carrots, the potatoes, and where did I put those wheat seeds? There we go, 38 of these bad boys. Wait, no, come here. Oh no, what did I do? Oh my god, you can actually turn these off? Oh, that's crazy! I had no idea! Anyway, come here, Kanan. Can I help you? Yeah, you can. Take these seeds and go be a farmer. Amazing! So, that's level three. How's it going, Jay? Good job, by the way. Bit slow, but you know, I'm not gonna hold that against you. Next up, we've got Dena is it Dena is that Den Denarius? No, Derpius. Derpius Bits, how's it going? We're going to give him the same treatment as Jay. Give him an axe. Uh, I'm waiting for something. There you go. And while we don't really want this guy to make any trees yet, we do want to use his recipe section. Now, one of the most important things about the Forester is he comes with the innate ability to create stripped logs. Really useful. Oh my god, it sounds like he's sick. Are you sick? Nah, mate. Hay fever. So what else can we do with this block? Settings, replanting. Yeah, sure, on. Break leaves. All of these, well, we don't need to use shears, though. So all of these are essential if he's actually digging trees. And you can use a selection tool to give him an area to dig trees. And I'll show you how that works, just for the sake of it. We're not going to use it, but that's fine. So you grab the tool. And what does it say? Well, you right click somewhere. Position B set. Position A with left click and then discard the tool when you're finished. So there and uh, let's say over here. It gives him a nice little bit of range to uh, grab trees. And look at this, you get this green outline block that shows you exactly where he's going to dig. So that should give him these three or four trees right here. Okay. Use shears on and break leaves off. There we go, all colonists tucked into bed and we skip the night. Now let's quickly teleport Derpius over here, because we can do that. Nice and handy way of getting them around, boom. And let's watch him go to work. He has an area to dig, he's got the tools he needs. Hi. Why are you bothering me? You want to sleep? You just had a night's sleep. What are you talking about? Go on, Derpius, get to work. And he's doing it. So there you go. Dig, dig, chop, chop. He can gather leaves if you want leaves. He can dig trees. And also, if you make him plant fruit trees, he will, I think, gather the fruits that drop. 
Anyway, that's the farm and the forester configured. Now it's time to hop over the river and look at the mine. Oh yeah, this is what I've been waiting for. This is an exciting one. So the farmer's configured and the forester is configured and they're both hard at work, but old a wharfish halter mine over here, he's not doing anything. He hasn't got the tools he needs and he hasn't got the scaffolding to actually build a mine. So go over here to build options and let's see if we can get this up to level two. Again, nothing too crazy materials wise and iron pickaxe, interesting. I guess that goes in an item frame. Well, okay, we can make all of these things. Let's get this built. So you're probably wondering, why is that wheel not spinning? We said we get it spinning. Well, I knew we were gonna get the mine up to level three, so I wanted to wait until we had a more permanent build in place before putting down a create spinning wheel. Also, yeah, the background here is not very nice. The terrain by the sides of the mine still needs to be tidied up, but I put my focus in getting the agricultural area up to speed and before next episode I will be tidying up the industrial area because fingers crossed once we get some industrial research done we'll have a whole load more buildings to build. A blacksmith is going to be essential, also a sawmill, a smeltery to do stuff with the ores that the miner gathers, not to mention a stonemason, a glass blower. Honestly I kind of feel like we should have put the industrial district on the other side where there's more room because there's loads and loads and loads of industrial buildings. But not only that, we have the agricultural area, we have the industrial area, but I also feel like we might need a kind of retail area where we put things like the Fletcher's hut, the glass blower, maybe even the flower shop, kind of like a Byzantinian version of a shopping mall. And so here we are, the level three mine is fully completed and we've also used some create wizardry to get this giant wheel spinning. Very cool, but that's 100% for decoration. It's absolutely not functional. Anyway, let's go in and check out the mine now. So what's been changed down below deck? Well, we've got loads more rack space. This is gonna come in really handy because this is where the guy, I think, is gonna store all of the ores and minerals that they gather. And the shaft itself, well, that looks kind of miserable. It's not exactly a very deep hole, but we can fix that. So let's go over here and talk to a warfish. Hello, my friend. And take a look at the mine block. So basically there is a setting here that lets you decide how deep this guy is gonna go. Here we go. So max depth is minus 100 at the moment. Okay. And the block he's gonna use to fill in things where he digs is gonna be cobblestone. Now that's usually a good block to keep because he's gonna dig up a lot of cobblestone as he goes. Oh, whoa, no way. So when we clicked on the worker right here, he actually tells us the maximum level pickaxe he can use, and it's diamond. I had no idea, so that's a brand new change to mine colonies. So while we could give him a diamond pickaxe, maybe even an iron pickaxe, oh hello, we could just borrow this. Yeah, honestly, why not? Hi. And here you go, my friend. Now we're gonna take a closer look at this guy because as he needs things, he's gonna let us know what he needs. So it says he's mining, he doesn't have a problem, but he is gonna ask us to give him blocks to create the scaffold and building of the mine. Basically, he has to build the mine shafts themselves, which means he needs a lot of blocks like wood and stuff. Oh my God, he's quick. But as you can see, he's digging away the cobble here. What's it today, then? And already he has 19 cobblestone, and one piece of coal ore. So basically this guy, whoa, he puts on his goggles to mine. Very cool. Oh wow, and the second piece of coal ore. So we'll keep an eye on him, but another place to track what he wants is the clipboard. And we can see here already he has some asks. And this is why we're gonna need the sawmill pretty soon because the miner needs a lot of things only creatable in the sawmill, but we'll try and keep on top of whatever he asks for the time being. It shouldn't be too tricky. So there we go, 15 ladders should keep him okay for a while. Good to see you. Boom. And so there he goes hard at work. Now this miner is so, so quick. I had no idea that they'd sped up miners because this guy is absolutely storming through these stone blocks. Amazing. We're gonna get loads and loads of ores and materials in no time at all. So there you have it, my dudes, the farm, the forester and the mine, all level three now and all configured and good to go. I'm gonna keep track of our miner, see what he needs to keep going with the mine and try and get him as many of those materials as possible. 
in between this and next episode, I'm going to try and build a tunnel underneath the river and put some rails in it, and we can see if that helps our colonists zip around the colony quicker. I might also see if I can make a bunch of rails, because fingers crossed this guy's going to discover some iron, and do a bit of colony TLC here and there, but whatever I do, I will let you know. But I'm planning next episode to be all about the house. Basically, I've lived out of a boat for so long now, and it kind of sucks over there. I hate all the rocking backwards and forwards. It's making me a little bit seasick. So if you've watched this far into the video, guys, I need your help. I want you to let me know any of the important, essential things you think I should be putting inside my player house. Number one absolutely is going to be a storage system, so don't worry about that. But I'm thinking any other kind of quality of life things that we should have down there. Let me know what your ideas are, and hopefully next episode we can crack through them. But as always, a massive thank you for watching, and until next time, hit like, subscribe, and until next time, take care.